Howdy all, a video here for 9150 users um, because we've done a new release of the 9150 firmware for those of you with um, ed trackers with magnetometers in them um, and the calibration process has changed just for the 9150s um, quite significantly for the better it's a lot simpler um, and also the results of the, the head tracking in the 9150 sketch is a lot better now you've got the, the performance, the, the kind of responsiveness of the 6050 um, but without the lag now so what we're going to do is just going to do a quick video covering uh, the 9150 calibration process, how to get your device up and working, and then we'll have a quick look at the end of what it's like in game. For any of you, maybe you've got 6050s thinking of upgrading them or just curious as to how much better the 9150 is. It might be hard to really see that in a video, but we'll give it a try. So what we're going to do, as usual, with all of these kind of versions of the video, I'm going to start from scratch. Some of this will be old news to some of you, but we're going to kind of angle it for people who are, who are starting afresh. So what I've got here is a, an Ed Tracker device in an enclosure. It's fitted with a 9150 uh, MPU sensor. Um, just have to reiterate, just so there's no confusion, if you've got a 6050 based device, uh, nothing here is of, of interest for you, I'm afraid. Um, this is only for users with magnetometer enabled devices. So, where to start? Right, well, first get, get a few bits of software together. So head to the EdTracker website, edtracker.org.uk. Uh, you will want to download, the soft in the software section, uh, you'll see there are some Arduino drivers. If you don't have these already and have them installed on your PC, if you've not had an EdTracker or an Arduino connected to your PC before, then download these. Um, and unpack them somewhere on your PC. Uh, likewise, in the GUI section of the software uh, downloads area, there's a GUI to uh, sorry Ed Tracker to GUI version four. Uh, might be a 4.0.1 or whatever in the future, but you definitely need version four of the GUI. Um, so download that, and same again, you get a zip file. Uncompress that somewhere on your PC, wherever you like. Uh, make a note of where. Uh, because you'll need that software soon. Right, now what we're going to do, um, we've got software, oh also interestingly there's a PDF guide on the website as well, also in downloads. Uh, if you go to the downloads section and look under documentation, all of what we're about to cover on this video is covered in a PDF uh, user guide. Um, there are two versions on the website, one for non-magnetometer versions, that's 6050 devices, and another specific version of the document for magnetometer uh, ed trackers. So in the case of what we're looking at here, you want that one, the magnetometer version. Um, download that PDF, it, it only uh, reiterates what I'm about to show you now, but in written form if that's useful. Okay, so, um, first thing that we're going to do is we're going to plug the device in. Now this is completely blank, this won't have any firmware on it whatsoever. Um, so what you will get is you'll get your Arduino device recognized. Now for those of you, like I said, who've not had a, an Ed Tracker plugged in before or any kind of Arduino device, it's not going to recognize your device. You're going to get a pop-up, uh, point it to the drivers file that we just downloaded, the Arduino 158 drivers. You can download them off the Ed Tracker website. There's nothing nefarious going on, so they're just the Arduino drivers off the Arduino website. If you prefer to grab those, that's absolutely fine. They're identical. Uh, but you do have to download the whole IDE from, uh, from the Arduino website, so it's a big download. Um, obviously I've had many a uh, Ed Tracker plugged in here, so that's not throwing up any drivers issues. And if we just quickly go to um, go to the properties on my computer, you can see if I go to Device Manager on ports, I've got what it thinks is an Arduino Leonardo um, on COM11, because that's what the, the Ed Tracker is based on, an Arduino Pro Micro board inside. Uh, so as long as you've got that COM port, that's good, we're ready to go. Uh, and then you can launch the uh, EdTracker GUI that you downloaded off the website, version 4, remember. So I'm going to run that up, and you should see something like so. Uh, now the first thing we need to do is flash the firmware into it. Now the good news compared to previous EdTrackers is there's only one firmware to flash into this that will do the job of calibration and head tracker all in one. So. Uh, from your drop down list here, you want to choose EdTracker2 underscore 9150. Um, that's the specific firmware for the 9150 um, MPU device inside it. Uh, currently version 4, obviously that could change as, the, as time goes on, but it'd probably be a, a revision of 4. So I'm going to choose that. 
You see here it's got COM11 already highlighted, Arduino, Leonardo. Make sure you choose the appropriate COM port that you've got your uh, your head tracker plugged into. If you've only got, you know, if you've got multiple head trackers or Arduino, Leonardo's plugged in, that'll be a problem. But otherwise, it'll just be the default one. Um, and very simply, we're connected to the internet. We're going to click Flash and leave it to it. And that'll connect on the internet. It'll download the latest firmware from the head tracker website and flash it into the device. So we'll leave that to go. Now what you'll see is a pause now for 20 seconds while the device initializes itself. Now this is an important point here. Um, with this sketch, 20 seconds from powering it on or resetting it, there will be a period of kind of no activity while it, while it does some basic calibration. So um, don't expect an immediate response from it, um, but just give it a while and eventually it'll, um, the, the GUI will connect up. And you can see here we've got um, some temperature readings on the on the graph here. You can see the temperature is stabilised. Um, and what we're going to do is is um, start off by wiping it and making sure we've got some sensible defaults in it. First step then, restore factory defaults button down at the bottom. Click that. It'll say are you sure you want to wipe all of your settings. We're just going to play it safe and click yes. And then you'll get some weird behaviour. The head will spin round and it'll just go completely bananas. That's fine at this stage. No problem. Um, what we're going to do first then is we're going to calibrate the magnetometer. There's two tasks to calibrate, the gyroscope and the magnetometer. The, uh, the gyroscope is actually done every time you power it on, so it shouldn't be too much of a problem. We'll get the magnetometer done first. Over on the magnetometer tab here, you'll see nothing in there at the moment. Uh, what we're going to do is we're just going to check that we've got the sensitivity of this good. So what I'm going to do is drag this sensitivity slider. For me it's about about there, just to the point where this points value starts changing. Yeah, see I'll go back here, not changing, not changing. As I slide down about there it starts to change. So I'm just going to back it up a little bit. About midway or just to the right of midway works for me. Then I'm going to click restart. Now, what I'm going to do, and this is the bit that's important to watch on the video, is I'm going to rotate the device in as many possible orientations as possible, but certainly this way, this way, and this way. Yep, so I'm going to spin it around all the three major axes, complete 360 degrees. And you'll see this points count here is going up, it's 224 now. We want that 500 or more. It won't let us save the calibration until we've done at least 500 points. So just keep spinning it around, try to get every orient possible orientation of the device as you can. Think about what you're doing and all the positions that you could get it into. And, uh, and there we go, see, so we can spin it this way. And we're up to 500 points there. You can do more, it's not a problem if you want to. Um, and I think that will do. Okay. When you've finished doing that, click the Save Calibration button here. And what you should get is lovely, a nice um, pair of, of kind of spheres, uh, red and green. Um, these are kind of magnetic points um, that what we're really looking for here is issues if it's not a round ball. Yeah, so if you've got spikes there, um, then it doesn't matter if the ball is kind of squished, particularly the red one, but um, if you've got any spikes or anything that doesn't look like a, a, a sphere of any sort, then restart it again. But that's looking perfect. That shows us generally a kind of a squished ball shape. Happy with that. So we've clicked save. Next thing then is to do the uh, gyroscope in it. And this is very, very simple. No issues here. Basically, all you do is leave the device completely flat on a table like so, yeah? Not up on a side like this or on the side, but just completely flat on a table um, and don't touch it. And click the auto gyro bias here at the bottom, yeah? So I'm gonna click that and then just don't touch the thing. If you do touch it, it's not the end of the world, just let it finish and press it again. But what we wanna do is let that chunter away for 20 seconds or so and it should level off and the key thing to look at here is that these th three values here for the gyro are all around zero and green. If they flicker up to kind of one or two it's not the end of the world but they should be kind of roughly um, uh, around zero. 
and uh, that's it. We can click reset view just to recenter the head. And what we should have now is a fully calibrated device. And you can test this out by obviously picking it up and just kind of generally moving it around and checking that the movement is looking about right. Yeah. You won't get um, rotation of your head in the GUI, you only get two axes. The, the device does uh, report it, we just don't show it in the GUI just to simply simplify matters. So, yeah, that's looking good. Um, and that's ultimately it. What we can do is you can tailor a few settings here. Um, you can rotate mounting axis depending on the position you have it on your head. So top USB left would be on the top with the USB cable coming out to the left. Um, for where I have it, USB on the right is more used to me, so I'm going to cycle that round to top USB right. Um, don't worry if the head moves all, down, all around while this is happening, you can reset that in a minute. Um, I prefer, there are two um, response modes, there's linear and there's expo exponential. Um, try them out, some people prefer one over the other. Uh, linear, as its name implies, very simple uh, kind of linear uh, action on the movement. Exponential is kind of fine around the dead ahead and then it kind of ramps up as you move off centre. Um, so it's it's personal preference really. Myself, I prefer exponential, so I'm going to go with that. Um, smoothing, you can, if you find that, that kind of fine movements, jitters of your head are kind of getting reflected in game, you can bump the smoothing up. Really this only happens in linear mode and it only happens when you've got your sensitivity cranked quite up. Um, so again, play with it. On exponential, I find I don't need any any turned on at all. Um, you can set a hot key to recenter it if you want to. At the moment, only function keys are supported, but we're hoping one day we'll get that sorted to use joystick buttons and so forth. Um, but you can set that if you want to, uh, and that's it. Let's go and take it for a spin in a game um, and see what it's like. Now, just in true true Blue Peter fashion, um, here's one that I made earlier, and it's mounted on my headset. Um, one quick point for 9150 users, the device is only supported a uh, top mount on top of the headset. Um, there is a good reason for this, is that we've found problems with putting them near the, the, um, the headset's speakers basically, the, the headphones. Uh, obviously there's magnets in here, uh, you get kind of within two inches of these, uh, these speakers and in my experience it, you know, it sends the magnetometer off crazy. So um, unless Basically, we wouldn't want to warrant that, that it's going to work well with it mounted on the side. So um, try and avoid uh, positioning it anywhere near any strong magnetic fields because for obvious reasons that's going to really throw the, uh, the magnetometer out. But like so, it should be absolutely fine. Um, okay, right, we're going to have a look at it in game, um, see if I can sort of show you the differences between the 6050 and the 9150. Probably hard in a short space of time because the, the only real problem you see with the 6050 is drift over extended periods of time like half an hour, an hour. Uh, and nobody wants to sit and watch me for an hour on uh, on YouTube. So um, yeah, let's go and have a look. Okay, so we're back. We're going to take the 9150 for a spin in a driving sim, a Seto Corsa. Um, excellent driving sim if you've not tried it. It's been out a couple of months now. Very good. A um, couple of things. Yes, I know the uh, surround, the three screen setup's not working. It, it does work, but I can't get Shadow Play to record a three screen setup. So for the purposes of this video, it'll have to be single screen. If anybody knows how to get Shadow Play to record a surround session, then please let me know. Uh, write it down here; that'd be great. Um, uh, the the um, the game doesn't support uh, joystick input for head look. So what I'm using is the excellent program Open Track. Um, this basically takes your joystick input of uh, Ed Tracker and converts it to the Track IR protocol. So the game thinks Track IR is plugged in, um, and it gives you all the. Um, it also gives you roll, which is kind of kind of not really necessary in this type of game but it, it's just an extra uh, degree of freedom which is useful. Um, now in terms of the, the head tracker, uh, I, as you can probably tell from the fact that my shirt has changed, I uh, am recording this the day after the first part of the video. Um, and what I haven't done uh, is reset this or recentered it in any way in 24 hours. Now a 6050 would definitely have drifted off by then. Um, but this has just been sitting on the gear stick uh, this is my second attempt at recording this because I cocked up the first video, but um, I have not pressed the reset on this at all. And you should find, uh, I, I mean, you have to take my word for it, but I assure you, you stick it on without having reset it in 24 hours, and that is pretty much still pointing dead ahead. Yeah, if it's off slightly, it's more than likely just because my headset is uh, not on the same on my head. So, uh, 
so there we go I mean that's not that's still looking pretty much spot on so let's um, take it for a spin KTM's quite quite good fun actually. It's kind of a bit of a car you can throw around in this, particularly if you if you like me, you don't take driving Tim's sims too seriously. Well not race sims anyway, I'm not the kind of uh, driving simmer who really likes to sit and refine his lines and kind of take his time on it quite so much. And the KTM lets you kind of take a few liberties which is nice. You can see Roll is working here just to point it out, oh he's coming up on the left and oh I'm gonna do it on the brakes here. it all away. And that's what I do like about this game is it is uh, very realistic, you know. You can't take liberties. <laughs> the under braking is very, very good. So there you go. You can see it working. I mean up and down. The driving sims really don't make the most out of uh, head tracking in my point of view especially when your view is limited to kind of that amount you can see that kind of locks out at the edge there um, that's the most most you can kind of head look in either direction uh, I'm not quite sure why the Seto Corsa does that um, I can understand maybe you've got like a hands device on your neck then it would limit it to a degree but um, ah well who knows who cares so there we go. Functionally, uh, from a head tracking perspective, it doesn't do anything more that the 6050 didn't. Yeah, so it, it's the same number of degree, three degrees of freedom, nothing different there. Um, the, the main difference it has is that magnetometer, which 
combats or, or eliminates drift over a long period of time. Now, um, now I know there's this kind of variable kind of feedback on the 6050s really. Some people have no issues with it. The majority of people have no issues with it. Um, but there are a few people who are reporting kind of chronic drift problems with it. I, I honestly don't, don't know what the cause of that is. Um, I've used a 6050 for the best part of 10 months now and not had any issues with it. Um, uh, it does drift, you know, it, it, the technology will always drift over an extended period of time, but our design goal, if you like, was always to have that kind of, you're only able to press the button once every 30 minutes or more. Um, you know, if you are getting drift on a 6050 that bad that it's every kind of two minutes, um, if you're happy that the device is built right, that it's working right, that it's not a faulty sensor and that your calibration is absolutely right, um, then the 9150 could be the, the way forward. Um, it's not a whole new Ed tracker to build, you know, you can desolder the 6050 off the top and solder on the 9150 breakout board and that's the subject of another video which I'll, I'll, I'll put a link to. Um, um, so you know, you can do that uh, and upgrade if you like to a 9150 and that gets rid of that kind of long term drift. Um, Hope that's useful, uh, and on that note, um, see you later. Bye.